Hey guys, today I'm going to a city called Hakodate. Hakodate is located in Hokkaido, Japan's northern main island. There's a lot of influence from the Western world in this city. You'll find out why later on in the video. A flight to Hakodate from Tokyo would be an hour and 20 minutes. But today, let's take the scenic route on the bullet train, known in Japan as the Shinkansen. This will get us to Shin Hakodate Hokuto Station in four hours. The city of Hakodate isn't far from there. So if you're ready, might as well make yourselves comfortable, sit back, relax, and enjoy the views from Tokyo to Hakodate.
We've finally made it. I hope you guys enjoyed the ride. Before I show you Hakodate, let's take a quick jump back into history to see why there is so much influence here from the Western world. Japan, back in the 16th and 17th centuries, did a lot of trading with the Portuguese, Spanish, and Dutch. Throughout this time, all but the Dutch put steady pressure on the Japanese to convert to Catholicism. This constant religious pressure, along with unfair trading practices done by the Europeans, forced Japan to ban most foreigners from the country. Starting in 1639, the only Europeans allowed to trade with Japan were the Dutch, since they helped the Japanese shogunate suppress any Christians that were in the country at the time. No one else from any other country was allowed to enter or even trade with Japan. Japanese citizens couldn't even leave the country during this time. If they left, they wouldn't be allowed back in. Japan's separation from the outside world would continue for the next 220 years. Let's fast forward to 1853. Some American whalers start sailing the Pacific Ocean since whale oil was the lighting source back in those days, before gas lighting was invented. More and more of these whalers were getting shipwrecked and stranded in the Pacific. The U.S. decides to send someone to Japan to ask for help with these shipwrecked whalers and to also hopefully open up trade between the U.S. and Japan. American Commodore Matthew Perry is sent on this mission to Japan with a letter from the U.S. President. Not this Matthew Perry. This guy. What's known today as Tokyo Bay was, at that time, considered strictly forbidden for any foreigner to enter. With his small fleet of gunships, Perry sailed straight towards this water, hoping to persuade the Japanese into signing his agreement with the U.S. Even though he only made it as far as the mouth of Tokyo Bay before the local authorities stopped him, this act of boldness done by Perry, as well as his apparent willingness to attack Japan if need be, forced these local authorities to take his letter for the time being. A year later, with an even larger fleet of gunships, Perry returns to the mouth of Tokyo Bay looking for an answer. Reluctantly, the Japanese agreed to the requests asked by Perry and the U.S. March 31st, 1854, is when the Treaty of Kanagawa was signed between Perry and the Japanese. Among other things, this treaty meant that Japan would agree to help any shipwrecked American sailors in the Pacific and that they'd also open up two ports in Japan as coaling stations where Americans could refuel their ships and get provisions. Over the years, these two ports, along with others across Japan, opened up to more and more international trading. One of these two ports is where we are today, Hakodate. These streetcars were horse-drawn back in 1897. The city decided to electrify the network in 1913. 
the lines run a total length of 6.7 miles, or 10.9 kilometers. Running every 6 to 12 minutes during the day, these streetcars can take you to most of the main tourist spots in the city. This brick warehouse was originally built in 1909 and has been renovated into a variety of shops since then. These Santas climbing up its walls aren't the only unusual thing about this warehouse. Along with clothing stores and the usual souvenir shops, you can also find stores carrying fashionable squid caps, squid accessories to give your house a styling look, stuffed squid with rice inside, an edible squid bottle used for drinking Japanese sake out of, and a variety of squid rice crackers. Hakodate is definitely the place to go for lovers of squid. Even the manhole covers in this city have a squid design on them. Besides squid, there's also this local hamburger chain that's really popular with a mascot that's a super freaky looking clown. So, what's today's dinner going to be? Squid? Clams? Crab? Horse? The Freaky Clown wins. The most famous menu option here is the sweet chicken burger. Don't let the clown scare you away. The food here is pretty darn good. Not too far from the burger shop is this restaurant, which is a great example of Western and Japanese architecture combined. On the walk back to the hotel, I came across the oldest concrete electricity pole in Japan. Made back in 1923, after Hakodate suffered from a major fire that wiped out two-thirds of the city. After that fire, the Japanese residents here started constructing things with concrete, including a temple that you'll see later on. can't come to Hakodate and not have sushi. Is it time to give that squid a try? I'll give it a pass. Come on. 
右だけ上からくださいなぜかというと、ちょうど今、ここを通っていて、It was designed as a five pointed star to reduce the number of blind spots from a possible enemy attack. This fort's design was based on European models. This part of Japan isn't far from Russia, so this fort was originally built by the Tokugawa shogunate against a possible invasion by the Russians. The Russians never attacked it. But in 1869, the Japanese would, as there was a civil war here at that time when this was the capital of the short lived Ezo Republic, which was independent from the rest of Japan. The battle that took place here marked the final chapter of feudalism in Japan. After that battle, the power in Japan fully shifted from the shogun to the emperor. Besides the fort, from this tower you can also see Mount Hakodate on the other side of the city. We'll go up this mountain tonight, but first let's check out some more of Hakodate, this time in a vehicle that's basically Japan's version of a Jeep. The controls in this Jimny are a nice mixture of digital and analog. This thing feels really utilitarian from its blocky design to its manual four wheel drive selector. A welcome feature is the addition of the heated seats. There's nothing like keeping your buns warm on a cold day like this. The trunk is tiny. But big enough for a couple of backpacks, and those seats fold down, which give you a nice flat storage area if you want. Now that you've seen the Jimny, let's get going. We're driving into the central downtown area now. In front of us here is the main train station. Hakodate Station first opened in 1902. The current station building was opened in 
Besides the station, this area has a number of hotels and restaurants, as well as the Hakodate Morning Market that you saw earlier in the video. This light gray building with a green dome-shaped roof was built in 1923. It's one of the first buildings made in Hakodate with reinforced concrete. Until 1965, it was home to a high-end department store, but today it's found a new use as the Community Design Center. Now we're heading up to the historic neighborhood of Hakodate called Motomachi. Coming up on the right side is the Otani Honganji Temple. It first opened in 1641 and was rebuilt after a fire in 1907. It's the first temple in Japan built with reinforced concrete. Ahead of us now is the Motomachi Roman Catholic Church. This church was first started by a French missionary in 1859. A series of fires destroyed the first temporary church as well as the main church that was built afterwards. It was then rebuilt with bricks, but damaged yet again in another fire that took place in 1921. After reinforcing the remaining brick walls with concrete, the church you see today was completed in 1923. Let's park for a bit and get a closer look at this historic Motomachi area. This memorial was made in 2004 to commemorate the 150th anniversary of Commodore Matthew Perry's visit to Hakodate. From Perry Square, you can get a nice view of Hakodate Port along with the rest of the city. I don't know about you guys, but all this sightseeing's made me hungry. I'm ready for some ramen. Hokkaido is famous for all different types of ramen dishes. Butter corn ramen is the one I chose today. I definitely recommend it. In Japan, there are three places which are said to have the best night viewing spots in the country. The view from the top of Mount Hakodate is considered one of these top three viewpoints. Let's ride a cable car up and take a look.
hope you guys enjoyed Hakodate. I definitely did. Until next time, stay safe and take it easy.